torsion. And this is, I think we're calculating angle of twist and uh, oh, shear stress and draw the shear distribution at the, and the draw the shear stress distribution at a point. So from the, the midterm, you know, we, we actually did this problem in class, dude. It's just, really? Yeah, oh, but it's all good. It's, oh man, it's all good. It's like, you know, no one's, you know, it just, it takes time. You got practice, right? Mm -hmm. So this is from the exam, torsion exam problem. And, and so in this problem, there's there's a few things. So, you know, you're given, well, first, you're given information you don't need, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, like the, the modulus of elasticity we don't need. Uh, but for torsion, we do need the shear modulus of elasticity for the angle of twist. Mm -hmm. And this is 38 gigapascals. It's a copper material. Um, the the shaft has a diameter of 80 millimeters and um, it has a distributed torque and a concentrated torque that we have and you're being asked to find um, the angles twist of NC with respect to A, uh, the absolute maximum shear stress, tau max, mm -hmm. and then to draw the shear stress distribution, tau distribution at, th at that location. Okay, mm -hmm. and so here is what it looks like. I, I, I really like, oh, I'm glad you put some headings, you know, and mm -hmm. it just, it, I like that. Even if you, especially when you're like stuck or, you know, you're under a lot of pressure, it's good to put some headings down, yeah. you know, that way and follow a process and starts like, I think it'll, like if you can follow a process, at least it'll relieve some stress or help you focus on one thing at a time. Yeah. So, so the schematic looks like this. I have a solid circular shaft. Um, here is a side view. It's fixed right here. I have a distributed torque here. It's a uniformly distributed torsion like this with an intensity of two kilonewtons two kilonewton meters per meter. Okay, you could ignore the meter per meter part, they cancel out, but the reason they it, it's shown is because it's a torque, per, it's a twisting moment per distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's why it's, it's important to have. And then there's a concentrated torque here of 1,200 mm -hmm. newton meters, which you could end up making a units conversion mistake, so maybe we call it 1.2 kilonewton meters oh yeah i remember looking at that and yeah then, yeah <laughs> yeah so that one 1.2 kilonewton meters and then the lengths are also given this is uh, 0.8 meters and 1.5 meters okay and oh there are some points even labeled this is label c this is points label b and this is a okay mm -hmm. So um, in order to find the angle of twist, the angle of twist, you know, one of the things that we need to do is identify like discontinuities, mm -hmm. right? And so, because that's gonna help us break up the, the rod into segments that we have to analyze, yeah. right? And so if I, you know, if I can identify the discontinuities, like here, the concentrated torque, the B, the A here, mm -hmm. what it really tells me is that the angle of twist is broken up into two segments for which I have two cuts, so one, two, mm -hmm. right? And it is equal to the sum of the angle of twist of each segment. So it's like the angle of twist from discontinuity to discontinuity, be like C to B mm -hmm. plus B to A, like that. And, um, and that's what tells me, okay, well, I, I gotta find the angle of twist of segment CB. I wanna find the internal torque there, there's no distributed torque here or distributed load, so I expect a constant internal torque, right? So here I could determine the internal loading. So two would be internal loading. And this internal loading, you know, it'd be like for segment CB, right? Mm -hmm. Or cut one. I could number these like cut one, cut two, right? For cut one. This would look like, if I choose the left side of the cut, it would look like this. There'd be the 1.2 kilonewton meters. Here is the torque CB. 
and then I sum, I apply equilibrium, so sum of the torques, torques equal to zero, I'll call this way is positive, so I have 1.2 kilonewton meters mm -hmm. plus TCB equals zero, and that tells me TCB is negative 1.2 kilonewton meters. Okay. Okay. Then for cut two, I, I could take the right side of the cut, yeah. but I didn't solve for the support reactions. Mm -hmm. So I would need to so solve for the support reactions mm -hmm. if I wanted to take the right side of the cut. Does that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So then, but um, if, anyway, if you were interested in the support reaction, uh, I'll just tell you that this is 1.8 kilonewton meters here. All right, I got that. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. So that's, that. if you wanted to check that, you can check that. It's not, it's not a difficult calculation. Yeah. The, um, but cut two, I could look at the, the left side of the cut. And for cut two, again, I'm just, I'm just drawing here up to cut two. My distribute, I cut through my distributed load, which is here. So I, I've, I've cut that off as well. Uh, this is two kilonewton meter per meter. And then I have 1.2 kilonewton meters here. And then this is 0.8 meters, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, technically, every single cut has, every single you know segment or cut has a coordinate system associated with it. But we didn't do it for cut one because we knew it was constant, yeah. right? It, it's, it's, okay. But for cut two, shoot, it, I'm gonna need a coordinate system, okay? Mm. And the coordinate system that I choose has to be uh, the, it, just like when we did shear moment functions, it should be from, um, the, it should be defined from an origin, and that mm -hmm. origin should be at a discontinuity. Okay. Okay, so that means either, if you wanna be able to see the origin, it would be either you put the origin of, cut, of the cut or the coordinate system, you put the origin of the coordinate system either at C or at B. Okay. Okay. You can also put it at A. Mm -hmm. All right. So I don't know which. What, what do you want to do? Let's. Just, okay. So do it at C. Then. At C. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So at C, I would say here's my court cut or here's my origin. This is I'm going to define this as zero, and for cut two, which is way over here, I'm going to define this as x two. Okay. Okay. So that is my coordinate system for cut two. And then my internal loading at the face of the cut, I will call this T, uh, it's between B and A, so TBA, like this. Mm -hmm. So now when I apply equilibrium, okay, I have TBA plus 1.2 kilonewton meters, right? Mm -hmm. And now I need the resultant of the distributed torque, which should be this torque per length times a length. Mm -hmm. And the length that I'm interested in is this length right here. Okay. Okay? And what is that length? Uh, x? It's it's x2 minus 0. 0.8, right? Yeah. X2 minus 0. 0.8 meters. And so then my torque is minus 2 kilonewton meter per meter times x2 minus 0.8 meters, and this all equals zero. Okay. So that is my function, and then TBA is, if I, you know, I'm gonna have to move everything to the other side, it'll be like two uh, kilonewton meter, oh, it'll be, I'm gonna let that meter per meter cancel out, it'll be two kilonewton meter per meter times x2, um, Let's see, plus here, 1.6, minus 1.6, yeah? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Wait. If yeah. I do negative, okay, anyway, I'm just gonna do some math here, two, x2, minus 1.6 mm -hmm. kilonewton meters, minus 1.2 kilonewton meters, and then here, then if I just simplify this one more time, I would get two kilonewton times x2, minus 2.8 kilonewton meters okay mm -hmm. all right so that's my internal torque function from B to C so what's even more important now we define the origin here 
the boundaries for x2, they can only apply between discontinuity and discontinuity, uh -huh. right? From B to A for cut two. Mm -hmm. So that means x2, what are the bounds for x2? Can I go from zero to one or 2.3 or 1.5? What are the bounds for x2? Is it from zero to 1.5? Hmm. So wait, would you be able to do from zero to the cut? For the, as I agree. It's, oh. it's right. Well, there's a, a zero to the cut, yeah. right? There's a cut here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this cut is between discontinuities. Okay. Right? So it's this x2 is defined for anywhere from B to C. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sorry, not B to C. From B to A. Yeah. Okay? So there's this cut here, and it's defined anywhere from B to A. Okay. Okay? All right. So what are the bounds for X2? Well, like, what are the numerical bounds? It can't be... What's the lowest number it could be? X2. The lowest number can be between B and A. Or, yes. Okay. So, or what would be the bounds of the coordinates? So, like, when X2... Okay, here, here, I'll ask. Sorry, like maybe maybe I'm, I'm not asking the right way. Um, when I'm at point B, what's the value of X2? Is point eight. Yeah, point eight, point eight, point eight. Okay, good. All right, point eight meters. And then when I'm way over here at A, mm -hmm. what is the value of X two? What is that complete value? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, point eight plus one point five, so uh, uh -huh. two point three. Perfect, two point three. And this is going to be important when we calculate the angle of twist. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's and here's why. All right, so here. I have in, in segment CB, do I have a concentrated torque or is it a function of X? CB. In the first segment oh. right here, in the first cut. Do oh. I have a concentrated torque or is it a function of X? Uh, concentrated. A concentrated torque. So that means I could actually say this is TCB, LCB over GJCB. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about in, in the cut two, do I have a concentrated torque or a distributed torque? Distributed. So that means I'm going to have to integrate for the angle of twist. And that's going to be some bounds. It'll be TBA, which is a function of x2 times, I'll just put parentheses, x2, dx2 over gjab. Uh, and thankfully, it's constant. So gj is constant for the whole shaft, so no big deal. Mm. But one of the things that's important is, like, what the heck are the bounds for this integral? Mm -hmm. Right? And that is from discontinuity to discontinuity. So here it would be from 0.8 to 2.3 meters. Okay. Yep. And Wait. now we solve and we plug and chug. And so, um, all right. So here, when I want to calculate the angle of twist, what is this? One, two, three. This angle of twist here, right? Mm -hmm. Then I would have, um, yeah, you know, I'm just going to plug out here. I can. And then this will be TCB was a negative 1.2 kilonewton meters mm -hmm. times the length of CB, which was uh, 0.8 meters. Plus, uh, let's see, I factored out the GJ. So it's from the integral from 0.8 meters to 2.3 meters times TBA, which is two for two kilonewtons x2 minus 2.8 kilonewton meters dx2 like that okay and then i integrate you don't want to mess up the gj calculation there is also this you have to also recognize that um this one over gj the G was 38 gigapascal, so that's 38 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. Mm -hmm. J is pi over 2 times the radius, so the diameter was 80, so here this is 40 millimeters to the fourth. This is in units of kilonewton, this I'm going to get units of kilonewton millimeter squared here. This is going to be kilonewton millimeter squared. Okay. okay. The top, this numerator, all this stuff in the bit, all this business can give me kilonewton meter squared. Do you see that? Okay. This is kilonewton meter squared. 
So you have to do some conversion. You have to either convert the millimeter squared down here to meters mm -hmm. or the meter squared to millimeters. Mm -hmm. So I would, I, I think what I would do is convert the meters to millimeters. So I would probably put 1000 millimeters divided by one meter quantity squared to convert everything in the numerator. And then I would evaluate you know this all this stuff this would be the same thing as that's right up here yeah okay and that would get an angle of twist okay. and that angle of twist result will be in radians and um uh let's see i think i got like um i got negative point zero zero three three four radians negative point zero zero three three four radians okay 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 all right all right all right now Okay, so do you feel good? Yeah, I feel good. Okay, do you want to calculate the shear stress or are you all right? Uh, the shear stress. Uh, the maximum shear stress. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. You're good? Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Okay. Having the internal torque diagram is useful. Mm -hmm. Internal torque diagram. Okay. Internal torsion diagram? Yeah. Oh, my, it's not ringing bells, but it's I get not, it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here, let's, let's, just, let's just take care of it real fast, okay? So here, so here, if I want to calculate so now I'm going to try to calculate the absolute maximum shear stress, okay, due to this torque. So I found already previously here, I have this distributed torque, 2 kilonewton meter per meter, and I have this 1.2 kilonewton meter like this, okay? And I found, you know, if I, this is like a shear diagram, really. And I have, I would draw vertical lines at discontinuities. Uh, I even told you that this is 1.8 kilonewton meters like this, mm -hmm. but it's all good right here. And here, if this is my internal torque diagram, we knew in the segment here that I had a constant internal torque of negative 1.2 kilonewtons, like right here in this segment CB, mm -hmm. negative 1.2, and then I had this function, yeah, okay. okay? And so here, in, so this was C, B, A, and in C, B, I had negative 1.2. Uh, this was in units of kilonewton meters. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if I looked at my equation right here for the internal torque of B, A, I knew it was a linear function. So I know it's just going to be a line. Yeah. And, and it has a positive slope, so it means it's increasing. Right, mm -hmm. and it's really increasing at a rate of two kilonewton per meter. So, what it's saying is, I have a positive slope. It's going to be increasing. Really, the area here mm -hmm. would actually be a would be how much I change. It's okay. going to be three. But anyway, so I you know this would be, I it's not good right here. But what I would get is a positive one point eight kilonewton meter here at the end. Okay. Okay, so. What okay, so here, so when I put x equals 0.8 here, I should get negative 1.2 from this equation, mm -hmm. and then when I put x equals 2.3, I should get positive 1.8. Okay, so 2 times 2.3 is 4.6 minus 2.8 is 1.8. So I have that's my torque diagram, and my maximum internal torque is the 1.8. Okay, so t. The max, T max, is 1.8 kilonewton meters. So that means my maximum stress is happening right here at the, at the, at the support, inside at the support, mm -hmm. okay? And so now I would just say the, the shear stress tau is this T rho over J, okay? And here, my cross section is a solid circular shaft so when I look at my cross section like this here's the center mm -hmm. my maximum like if I asked you for the shear stress distribution right here mm -hmm. okay uh, on this let's say this radial line right here mm -hmm. okay where would it my shear stress be maximum uh, the furthest distance furthest distance good right here okay and I have a positive internal torque. So is my torque going counterclockwise 
or clockwise? Is it going into the page or is it coming out of the page? Into. Hmm. It's out of. Or <laughs> it's technically out of because I have a positive internal torque here. Okay. And a positive internal torque, it comes out of the cut. Okay. Out, right? Yeah. So really, this torque is going like this, 1.8 kilonewton meters. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is a positive internal torque. I curl my fingers in the direction, and then my thumb will be pointing out of the page mm -hmm. here. Right? A and you said it's maximum here. The distribution shape is, is it linear, constant, parabolic? Linear. It's linear. And what's the value right here at the middle? Zero. Zero. Good. So here... Here, here. When like would it be parabolic? Or it wouldn't. Oh, not okay. here, it wouldn't. Oh, well, our shear stress due to transverse shear is parabolic. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have, like, a hook that has... Oh. Anyway, that's... But we haven't... We're not doing that. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and so... Um, so that so this is where my tau max is happening. I know from I know that the 1.8 kilonewton meters is acting this way. Mm -hmm. That's why I drew the arrows going this way, just like you know, like I said, smearing a bagel with yes. cream cheese, right? You know what I'm saying? And um, and and here, if I want to solve for a number here, this tau max number, I you know I just take all the information you told me. This is 1.8 kilonewton meters. I probably want to convert it into millimeters, so I'll do 1,000 millimeters per meter. Uh, the radius, the outer radius is 40 millimeters. We were given a diameter of 80, okay? Divided by the polar moment of inertia, which is pi over two times the outer radius to the fourth. All right. and, and if I calculate this, I would get, oh, I, uh, I would get units of kilonewton per millimeter squared, which is one, two, three. I think it's point oh one seven nine uh, kilonewtons per millimeter squared, which is a gigapascal, mm -hmm. and this would be one, two, three, seventeen point nine newtons per millimeter squared, which is a megapascal. Seventeen point nine megapascals, and this is this would be equal to seventeen point nine MPa, right there. All right. And that's that's that one. All right, all right. Search for.